this is Ken Crawford. One of the aspects to solar image processing is what to do with a sky background. Well, I already have a tutorial that covers how to replace backgrounds, but what seems to be the trend these days is a type of a gradient ring effect of all different types of colors, everything from blue to gray to green. Now, there's different ways to accomplish this. You can use multiple layers and then use a paintbrush, but my hand is not quite that steady with the paintbrush. So I'm going to show you a quick and easy way you can do this with using masks. And since this is just the surface detail, what we're going to want to do is add a kind of a ring arc around the sun here uh, with a nice soft transition to say a blue color. So let's get started with that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mask. I'm going to create it with an arc. So I'm going to use a shape to do that. So under your shape tools, there's one that's called the ellipse tool. Before you start drawing, make sure that you have checked this default background and foreground colors and make sure that you have black as the foreground color. So once that's the case, I'm going to just draw that circle so it's oh, it's pretty close to what I'm looking for and release it. And what you get over here is a new layer with a shape. And the cool things about vector shapes is that we can manipulate them very easily. We want to mimic the shape, so the move tool, or the letter V, I'm going to get that and just pull this back a little bit so we can see the shape. And then control T will give us these handles so we can manipulate the mask. So what we want to do is kind of squeeze that down to make it more like an ellipse. And then just click and drag it into place. And I'll keep doing that until we more or less mimic the shape of the sun. And that's getting really close. So just in a few moments, using this, the outline of the sun itself, I have a fairly good arc that should match. So now I go to the selection tool. And when you press that, what it's going to ask you to do is apply the transformation. So I'm going to apply that. Now what we have is a rough mask. The next thing I want to do is turn the shape into a mask. And that's really simple. We highlight the mask and control click the mask and you'll see the marching ants show up because I've taken this shape mask and which is basically a vector mask and turned it into a selection. You got the marching ants. I'm going to bring over the channels panel and the channels panel is very important. What the channels panel is is that this is where masks live and they live in alpha channels. So with the marching ants going on we just have to press this little button here and this takes our selection and turns it into an alpha channel containing the mask. There we go. That's alpha 1. Control D to deselect the image because we don't we don't need that anymore. So I'm going to put away the channels panel out of the view for a moment. Now that I've created the mask and it's saved safely in an alpha channel, all I need to do now is delete this layer because I'm not going to need it anymore. I'm going to go up to my layers panel and go for a new fill layer. That's solid color. Now you can actually use a gradient which it really gives kind of an interesting uh, artsy type look too but we're going to do the solid color for now. And that'll pop up this dialog box. I'm going to call this artsy ring. Now what we want to do is pick the color we want this guy background to be. So let's start with the blues here. And you just kind of click inside or if you know the uh, RGB numbers, you can do it that way. But I'm going to find something that's kind of a gray blue. And that looks just fine. And now I'm going to apply the mask to it. So I'm going to bring back my channels panel. Alpha 1 was the name of my mask. I'm going to control click to turn that mask on. 
go down to the layers panel click the add layer mask boom now I'm going to put away my channels panel so we can bring in the mask panel now what we see is exactly the opposite of what we want we've got blue on the surface of the disk and we really want it out here and that's in the masking rules are black conceals white reveals or another way to think about it black protects and white selects so I'm going to invert the mask and we want to turn that into something artsy though that nice little artsy ring so what we're going to do first is under the mask is you have a feather command Increase the feather about maybe three pixels, not much. Then I'm going to put this away. Now here comes the fun part. I'm going to right click on the layer mask and then go down to the refine mask tool. Now I go over this in a lot of detail in my other processing tutorials with solar processing for mask refinement. But basically what we have here is a way to refine the, the current mask. Without getting into too much detail, the easiest way to do this is I'm going to manipulate the edge. So we come down here and manipulate the edge. And But one thing that you need to know is under the view mode, you can look at this in several different ways. I use the K. A is black and white, so it shows me the mask in its entirety. And then on layers, which shows the complete composition as I'm working on it. And that's the way I'm going to want it right now. What we want to do is just adjust the edge. The first thing we're going to do is feather it. I'm going to crank up the feathering to maybe 26 or so. And we start to see this pretty cool ring start to show up, right? And now shifting the edge, if I go positive, what it does is it moves the edge in the wrong direction because what you have is an inverted mass. So we actually want to contract the edge minus numbers. And we can shift that edge out. See how that works? More feather moves it you can shift it even more so at this point if I have a pretty strong feather just a slight contrast remember the contrast tool will define the edge more and more so I want a little bit of definition on the edge and about that much shift I'm pretty happy with that now the output box means we can output this to a new layer mask or to the existing mask I'm gonna go ahead and output it to a layer mask so it actually alters the settings of my mask I will alt click the mask and show you what the mask looks like so we can even refine this even further bringing in the mask tools adding some more feather now you can really make that a very soft edge because this particular feather under the mask tools is a bit different than refine mask. Refine mask is almost like adding a Gaussian blur, uh, but it's only trying to affect the edge. This will actually blur from the opposite direction, it seems. It gives me a nice smooth transition. I like that uh, little artsy arc I've got going on there. And what's very cool is I can double click the mask and go, well, let's see. I'd like to maybe see what other colors look like and on the fly I can change the colors to achieve exactly the look that I'm looking for. Now because this is a mask we can also do some other things with this layer. I can adjust the opacity to do a very gentle color approach another thing is is you can experiment with different blending modes um, hard light is a nice one because what it does is manipulate the pixels based on its weight with a little adjustment there you can have a very nice uh, color transition of course bring in the mask and you can feather it like crazy really do a beautiful soft gradient so don't forget to look at these different blending modes and what they'll do for you So as you can see, using a simple vector shape, an ellipse, turning it into a mask, manipulating the mask while using a fill layer, you can turn this into this. I have other solar processing tutorials on my website if you want to learn more about these types of masks. Thanks so much.